about 12 watts into it. The middle unit here is a KRP 5000 amplifier from Advanced Communication System. In it, it has a CAT 1000 controller unit for the repeater. This, uh, this is our 82 machine. It has an auto patch in it. We can do paging, voice messaging. Uh, we can do many different functions throughout the day. In fact, we have time messages come on at the half hour uh, mentioning about the tone control. And every hour we also broadcast the, uh, the uh, date of time of date. And we also give the temperature every 15 minutes after the hour. The bottom here, here is actually manufactured by the same company. It's our old repeater. We had some problems with it and um, in years past we decided to repeat it or replace it. And right now it's just our great backup. We've always had a problem if we ever had a problem, you know, a difficulty with the repeater, we were out of machine for a while. Well, last summer we had such a problem, we just put the other, the old machine back in place and we were up and running again in about 15 minutes. We also have what we call a smart charger down there where we have a loose commercial power. Deep cycle 12 volt marine battery down in the case way down there. This keeps that battery charged up. Uh, two or three years ago, I think we ran for six to eight hours off that battery repeater operation during a storm watch situation where most of the town lost commercial power. The uh, hard line basically comes down the top of the cabinets, and I think John has some pictures of it uh, going through a net tray system we have and goes out and up the tower. The antenna, for the elevation of the repeater site is about 1,285 feet. And the antenna is mounted 285 feet up the tower in an inverted position. And yes, we did check with the, uh, the antenna manufacturer. We can hang that inverted, so there's no problem there. But uh, we're also on the south leg of the uh, tower. And one of the reasons being is uh, so we don't interfere with the A2 sites up in Twin Cities. And for the repeater operation in a single antenna, you're required to have some duplexes. We have a set up a cell wave duplexes here with six canisters, and that will trap out the trap out the receive signal on one side and the transmit signal on the other side. That way, we're allowed allow us to use the same antenna. Without, uh, okay, now let me see you, showing you the nice, neat side of the uh, repeater. We'll show you the back side. What we have here is cables coming in from the duplexers. This one's actually going back up to the feed line, feeding the antenna system. The other cable comes in, this cable comes in, excuse me. We actually have a filter put in line here to keep out the pager traffic. The uh, paging system down at the Mayo Clinic seems to raise havoc with our repeater. So we put this little filter in and all the uh, problems went away. Basically goes into the repeater, comes back out. I think we're putting about 12 watts of power out of the, amp uh, the repeater, feeding the power amplifier. The amplifier is putting about approximately 100 watts of power out. Go back down the duplexers, and I think, if I remember correctly, we put about 75 watts of power on the far side of the cans. So there is a, there is some power loss drop in the duplexers, but we're still putting 75 watts out. Um, once again, that's the power amp. You can barely see it. We actually our weather station buried back in here on the side. This is the uh, Pete Brothers, I think, uh, 100 that uh, what we're using for is temperature data. We have a probe mounted on the outside of the building and every 15 minutes after the hour it gives temperature and then at 10 o'clock, I believe it is, it gives the high and low temp for the day. This is our current, our brand, our new repeater. This is the old unit. And about the only thing is our deep cycle marine battery down at the bottom of that brick plastic case. Okay, we moved outside just because it's a little quieter out here and just give you a quick demo on two functions you can do with a repeater. Uh, like I said before, one thing we can do is the time of day, and um, ends the rates it in. Welcome to the W0MXW repeater 159pm. Okay, that will automatically give the time every hour for us too. Then another thing you do is auto patch. If you're ever somewhere and gee, you don't have your cell phone around and you want to make a <laughs> phone call and within the local dialing uh, zone and you want to call a number within Rochester, you can contact the tech committee or the treasurer and uh, we'll assign you an auto dial number. And that's a three digit code. You enter that code in and it will dial the number of your choice. Most people it's their home number. And what you do is go ahead and ID. This ends right to them accessing auto patch. Please call to N08 
the repeater, we'll go ahead and pick up the phone line. And that series of beeps you hear is masking the actual tones that's used to dial the repeater. And it will go ahead and ring until, in this case, my answering machine picks up at home, because nobody's home. And um, you can go ahead and carry a phone conversation on. Auto patch completed at 2 p.m. The uh, auto patch will run, I believe, for about three minutes uh, without anybody using it before it shuts itself off. The total time, I think, is five to ten minutes, even during a conversation, then it times itself out and uh, goes back off again. So if you ever have a problem with it and um, don't know how to hang it up, just let it be for a while and it will clear itself eventually. Or you call one of the Tech Committee members.